In this part, we will focus on the wind. Variations in surface pressure at sea level cause air to move from high to low pressures, creating wind. We recall that the wind direction is influenced by the Earth's rotation. And by Spallot Law, state that in the northern hemisphere, if you stand with your back to the wind, low pressure is on your left. The opposite is true in the southern hemisphere. This is most noticeable in the mid latitudes. The wind strength is directly linked to the horizontal gradient of pressure. The higher the gradient, the stronger the wind. The closer the isobars on the chart, the stronger the wind. The surface pressure chart shows highs and lows and the isobars between. Using bayes badot law, we can visualize the wind direction and intensity. Jet streams are associated with mid-latitude, low-pressure areas. In very general terms, the movement of air from high to low pressure will lead to the formation of jet streams at high altitude. The seasonal climatological charts show the average positions of jet streams in the upper troposphere. A jet stream is a very strong tube of wind located towards the top of the troposphere. They have the following general characteristics. They are normally found between 26 and 40,000 feet. They're about 3,000 feet in depth and about 50 nautical miles wide, and they may extend for thousands of miles. The wind speeds are generally between 55 and up to 220 knots. They are faster in the winter. The main direction of jet streams is westerly, and they are located at mid-latitudes. In summer, they are found towards the poles. Over the western part of oceans, they are displaced further south. Now returning to the pole-to-pole -pole cross section, we see on this average situation that there are jet streams at the tropical latitudes and at the mid-latitudes. The ITCZ, or the Intertropical Convergence Zone, is a narrow zone where the trade winds of the two hemispheres meet. Depending on the season, the ITCZ moves from one hemisphere to the other. In summer, it is in the northern hemisphere. In winter, it is in the southern hemisphere. This is due to the inclination of the Earth relative to the Sun. In summer, the mid-day Sun is above the Tropic of Cancer. And this tropic receives maximum energy at the surface. The ITCZ is in the northern hemisphere. In winter, the mid-day Sun is above the Tropic of Capricorn, giving maximum energy to this area. The ITCZ shifts to the southern hemisphere. We've now covered the theory but it's important for aviators to know not only the major climatic phenomena around the globe, such as the ITCZ and the position of the jet streams, but how these may evolve throughout the year with seasonal and daily changes. So let's recall where we can find this information on the aviation weather products. We use METARS to get the local weather and the QNH. Surface pressure charts gives us frontal zones and isobars, and from these, prevailing winds can be estimated. The SIG weather will give us the tropopause temperature and height, and in addition, we can see the altitude and strength of the jet streams. And finally, wind temp to get winds and temperatures at different flight levels.